welcome back to megzone in the previous lecture we have already covered the topics like maxima and minima limits uh, continuity and differentiation of the functions and from this lecture onwards we shall be starting with the gamma function the beta function and the vector algebra now before starting this lecture i would simply like to request you to kindly subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon so that all the important updates are given to you at the right time and you are being notified first so i would also like to request you to kindly suggest this channel to your friends and colleagues so that they are also benefited because this is the exclusive channel on youtube where everything is provided absolutely for free you do not have to pay any money you simply have to view the lectures make your own notes and prepare for the examinations you can also download the entire study material absolutely from uh, absolutely for free from the description section of this video which has been given and you will be able to access all our study material from our blog page you can also rate our facebook page we are also having our facebook page by the name of vr meg zone and you can give your valuable feedbacks there also so now let us start with the first topic that is the gamma function and the gamma function has been defined such a manner bar of n is equals to 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power n minus 1 d t so this is actually called as the gamma function whereas bar of n plus 1 is equals to n into bar of n or this is simply n factorial so bar of 4 can be simply written as bar of 3 plus 1 so this is nothing but 3 factorial hence it is equals to 6 bar of 5 can be written as bar of 4 plus 1 so this is 4 factorial which is equals to 24 so this is the actual definition of the gamma function and please remember one standard case bar of half is equals to under root of pi this result we have to remember directly for the gamma function now there are two cases the first case is case number one and according to case number one n is a positive integer okay and the second case is n is positive rational fraction okay so the first case is n is a positive integer just like we had and so that bar of n plus 1 is equals to n factorial so I have already told you that is bar of 3 is equals to bar of 2 plus 1 is equals to 2 factorial that is 2 then bar of 5 is equals to bar of 4 plus 1 this is 4 factorial and this is equals to 24 now let us say that n is a rational fraction then under root of n plus 1 would be equals to n bar n so uh, bar of 5 by 2 can be written as bar of 3 by 2 plus 1 and this can be simply 3 by 2 bar of 3 by 2 because here the value of n is 3 by 2 so we can also write this as 3 by 2 bar of 1 by 2 plus 1 so this can be written as 3 by 2 into 1 by 2 bar of 1 by 2 and hence this would be equals to 3 by 4 under root pi okay so this is the case when n is a fractional or a rational fraction and if n is a negative rational fraction rational fraction then what we are going to do is bar of n is equals to bar of n plus 1 upon n and we are going to solve this by using the same approach by using the same approach okay and so this was all about the cases where we were considering n as a positive integer n as a negative uh, positive rational fraction n as a negative integer and if n is a negative integer agar ye negative integer ho gaya, then this function is not defined the function that is gamma function is not defined for n equals to a negative 
integer. So let us do a numerical where we have to find out the gamma function gamma of minus 1 by 2. So this can be simply written as by considering this case that is bar of minus 1 by 2 plus 1 upon minus 1 by 2. So this would be bar of 1 by 2 upon minus 1 by 2. So this would be simply minus 2 root pi because 2 will go in the numerator and bar of half is equals to under root pi. So this is a very very simple numerical. Now we will do one more numerical which is based upon this gamma function. Okay, we have been given integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus y cube y to the power 1 by 2 dy. So what we will do here is let y cube is equals to t therefore y is equals to t to the power 1 by 3. Okay, so at t is equals to 0 sorry y, at t is equals to 0 y is equals to 0 and at t is equals to infinity y is equals to infinity. So we are going to change the limits accordingly and from this dy by dt is nothing but 1 by 3 t to the power of minus 2 by 3 d sorry dy is equals to 1 upon 3 t to the power minus 2 by 3 d t just by simply differentiating this. Now what we will do is we will keep uh, y cube as t and we will integrate 0 to the 0 to infinity e to the power minus t, t to the power 1 by 6, 1 by 3, t to the power minus 2 by 3, dt into t. Now simply this can be 0 to infinity, e to the power minus t, t to the power 1 by 3, to the power half, this can be written as half, multiplied by 1 by 3 into t to the power minus 2 by 3, dt. Because multiply kar denge, so it will be minus 2 by 3, dt. And we will keep 1 by 3 outside 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power 1 by 3 e power half 1 by 3 sorry 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 we will take 1 by 3 outside and this is 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power 1 by 6 minus 2 by 3 d t okay so all the powers of t will be handled together and this would be 1 by 3 integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power minus half okay so this can also be written as 1 by 3 0 to infinity e to the power minus t t to the power half minus 1 this can be written as half minus 1 therefore the value of n which is obtained is 1 by 2 okay so we are going to find out 1 by 3 bar of n that means 1 by 3 into bar of 1 by 2 this is nothing but 1 by 3 under root pi okay so this is going to be the answer so this was all that we have to study the we have to study in the gamma function now we shall be discussing about some beta functions okay now we shall be starting with the beta functions and a beta function beta m comma n is actually defined as 0 to 1 x to the power of m minus 1 into 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1 d x and beta of m comma n is equals to bar of m into bar of n upon bar of m plus n okay so i will directly solve just one question based upon this and we have to solve for example 0 to 1 x to the power of 6 upon under root of 1 minus x square so what we are going to do is we are going to assume let 1 minus x square is equals to t so minus x square would be t minus 1 so x would be simply under root 1 minus t minus sign in the to ho gaya 1 minus t and what would be dx dx would be simply minus dt upon 2 under root 1 minus t and if we take the limits at x is equals to 0 t would be sorry at t is equals to 1 x is equals to 0 at t is equals to 0 x is equals to 1 so these would be the limits 
and now we will substitute the values in this question and we will obtain 1 by 2 because 1 by 2 is here, so 1 by 2 is here, 0 to 1, 1 minus t to the power 3 minus 1 by 2 into t to the power minus 1 by 2 dt, okay, so this would be 1 by 2 integral 0 say 1, 1 minus t to the power 5 by 2 t to the power minus 1 by 2 dt and this is simply 1 by 2 integral 0 say 1 1 minus t 5 by 2 can be written as 7 by 2 minus 1 dot t to the power minus half can be written as half minus 1 dt now this is simply 1 by 2 beta of 7 by 2 comma 1 by 2 because this is m and this is n so simply it would be 1 by 2 7 by 2 bar of 1 by 2 this is not root upon bar of 7 by 2 plus 1 by 2 okay so this will be simply 1 by 2 and the short trick is we will subtract 1 subsequently till we achieve 1 by 2 so 7 by 2 will be first reduced to 5 by 2 then 3 by 2 then 1 by 2 and finally bar of 1 by 2 multiplied by bar of 1 by 2 can be simply written as bar of 1 by 2 and here it will have 8 upon 2 that is 4 so bar of 4 simply means 3 factorial so this will be 1 by 2 into 5 by 2 into 3 by 2 into 1 by 2 into root pi and this will also be root pi whole upon 3 factorial so when we will solve it we will get the answer as 5 pi by 32 so this is actually the answer and only this much we have to study in the beta functions now we shall be starting with the last portion of this last lecture and that is the vector algebra okay so before starting with the vector algebra one more topic is left and that is area bounded by the figures so now let us start with the area bounded by the figures now area bounded by the figures i will directly solve the question and from the question itself i will be explaining you the different fundas so we have to find out the area bounded by x square is equals to 2y and a line x is equals to y minus so x square is equals to 2y we see that it is a parabola and x is equals to y minus 4 can be simply written as y is equals to x plus 4 so this is actually the equation of a straight line having a slope or the value of m is equals to 1 and y intercept is positive 4 so first let us draw the figure x square is equals to 2y will be a parabola like this and y is equals to x plus 4 so this is the parabola that is x square is equals to 2y and if we draw the line the line would be somehow like this such that this region is getting into common this line is y is equals to x plus 4 okay so this is the parabola x square is equals to 2y i am so sorry the question has been given as we have to find out the area bounded between the figure y square is equals to 4x and the line y is equals to x plus 4 because this parabola is actually representing y square is equals to 4a x type parabola. So this is actually the y square is equals to 4a x. So this is the common region and we have to find out the area of this region. Now let us discuss another contrary example of this that is if it would have been given x square is equals to 2y and the line was y is equals to x plus 4 then in that case the parabola would have been like this that is x square is equals to 2y and the line this would be y is equals to x plus 4 such that the region or the area which is coming common in between these two sections is the red shaded area so the first step is to find out the points of intersection 
points of intersection would be this point and this point. So first step is to find out the point of intersection. Now in order to find out the point of intersection, what we are going to do is we have been given x square is equals to 2y and we have been given y is equals to x plus 4. So from here x is equals to y minus 4 and we will keep this value here. So we obtained y minus 4 whole square is equals to 2y. So now we will form the quadratic equation that is y square plus 16 minus 8y is equals to 2y. And after solving this, we will get the values of y is equals to 2 comma 8. Two values of y will be obtained. When y is equals to 2, x is minus 2. And when y is equals to 8, x is equals to 4. So the points are minus 2 comma 2 and 4 comma 8. Now, once we have evaluated the points of intersection and now we will locate these two points. So, by looking at the coordinates of this point, we are sure that it is minus 2 comma 2 and this point would be 4 comma 8. Now, we will move on to the second step and the second step has two methods. We can assume two methods for this. The first method is we will fix a vertical strip vertical strip and corresponding to the vertical strip we will fix the y limits okay and the next is or we can fix a horizontal strip we can fix a horizontal strip and corresponding to the horizontal strip we can fix the x limits okay so let us take the first method for this case, that is we are going to fix a vertical strip. I will redraw the diagram. Okay. So let us draw a strip like this. Now for this strip, we can see that the lower limit is this point and the upper limit is going to be this point that means the strip having the coordinates between this parabola and the lines such that the parabola is x square is equals to 2y and this has been given as y is equals to x plus 4 so the coordinates of y for this strip are actually varying between x square upon 2 say like x plus 4 tak. so in order to find out the area we use the double integral okay so area will be written as double integral such that the inside integral we are taking dy and outside is taking dx. So corresponding to dy the limits are x square upon 2 say like x plus 4 and the limits of x are we are varying between minus 2 say like 4. Tak. So this would be minus 2 to 4. So let us again write down that equation integral x is equals to minus 2 to x is equals to 4 integral dy such that y is varying between x square upon 2 to x plus 4 dx now we will first solve the innermost integral and then we'll go for the outer integral so this would be minus 2 to 4 integral of dy simply y and if we put the limits we will obtain x plus 4 minus x square upon 2 d x <laughs> okay now what we'll do is we will simply solve this integral by using our conventional methods and this would be x square upon 4 plus 4x minus x cube upon 6 the limits are varying between minus 2 to 4 and hence we will obtain 8 plus 16 minus 64 by 6 minus 2 minus 8 plus 8 upon 6 that is we are just simply putting the limits and we will obtain 30 minus 12 that is equals to 18 so the answer is coming out to be 18 units okay the answer is 18 units now let us solve one more question you have to find out the area 
बाउंडेड बाय एक्स स्क्वायर इज इक्वल्स टू फोर वाई एंड वाई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल्स टू फोर एक्स दैट इज वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द एरिया व्हिच इज बाउंडेड बिटवीन दीज टू पैराबोलास सो लेट अस फर्स्ट ड्रॉ द डायग्राम सो वी ऑलरेडी नो दैट वाई स्क्वायर इज इक्वल्स टू फोर एक्स इज अ पैराबोला लाइक दिस and x square is equals to 4y is going to be a parabola like this so the region this is actually common and we have to find out the area of this region which is bounded by the curve so this is y square is equals to 4x and this is x square is equals to 4y so our first method or the first aim is to find out the points of intersection so points of intersection will be evaluated first that is here we have the value of y or we can simply put the value of y here or x here and we can evaluate so y square upon 4 whole square that is y square upon 4 whole square is the value of x ka square is equals to 4y so we have y e power 4 upon 16 is equals to 4y So y to the power four upon sixteen minus four y is equals to zero, and from this we will take y common. So this would be y cube upon sixteen minus four. This is equals to zero, and from here one value of y is coming out directly to be zero, and the other value y is equals to four. So these are the points corresponding to y, and now corresponding to y is equals to zero. The value of x is also going to be zero. So 0 comma 0 is the first point that is origin and then we have this point and if y is equals to 0 oh sorry at y is equals to 4 if we put in this then x is also going to be 4 so the coordinates of this point is 4 comma 4 and the coordinates are 0 comma 0 so the points of intersection are 0 comma 0 and 4 comma 4 okay now for this i am again using the concept of fixing a vertical strip okay such that the lower limit of the strip is varying from x square upon 4 that is y ki value yahan pe hai x square upon 4 aur yahan par hai 2 root x to y ki limits ho gayi yahan se leke yahan tak x ki limit ho gayi 0 se leke 4 tak aur fir hum apna solve kar lenge and then we will simply get the answer so let us write down Area is equals to double integral dy and y is varying from x square upon four to two root x and dx outside and x is varying from zero to four. Now let us solve zero to four dx. You can write here or you can write x square upon four to root x dy. This is simply zero to four. 2 root x minus x square upon 4 dx, and after integrating it, you will get 2 into x e power 3 by 2 whole upon 3 by 2 minus x e power 3 upon 12. The limits are from 0 to 4. Now, when you will solve it, the answer you will get, be getting is 16 upon 3. So this is the actual answer for the area which is bounded between the two. curves okay and if we are given three integrals three integrals means we are finding out the volume and two integrals means we are finding out the area so this is the basic difference between two integrals and three integrals now we will discuss some important formulas some important formulae the first is the length of the arc for a if we have been given f y is equals to f of x and we have to find out the length of arc between x is equals to a to x is equals to b the length is given by integral a to b under root 1 plus dy by dx whole square d x so this would be the formula for the length of the arc and if x has been given as a function of y then what would be the length the length of the arc between the two points that is y is equals to c 
to y is equals to d it would be simply c to d under root 1 plus dx upon dy whole square d y so this is going to be the length of the arc when x is given as a function of y and here this is the length of the arc when y is given as a function of x now we have another important case that is length of arc r is equals to f of theta between the points theta is equals to theta 1 to theta is equals to theta 2 is given by integral theta 1 theta 2 under root r square plus dr by d theta whole square d theta so this would be the length of the arc and one very very important case this is very very important case the length of the arc between x is equals to phi of t and y is equals to psi of t the length of the arc is x is equals to phi t and y is equals to psi of t between the points t1 to t2 is simply l is equals to t1 se leke t2 integral dx upon dt whole square plus dy upon dt whole square whole into dt. So please note that this is a very important case and this may be asked in gate 2018. Okay. Now we have some more important formulas regarding volume and the formula is the volume of solid revolution of arc y is equals to f of x around x axis between the points x is equals to a to x is equals to b is actually given by v is equals to integral a to b pi y square dx so this axis ke about bolega wo dx a jayega baki a jayega y square theek hai so if i draw the diagram this is nothing but the volume of this figure between the points x is equals to a to x is equals to b and this is nothing but y is a function of x okay now the volume of the solid revolution of the arc x is equals to f of y around the y axis around y axis between the points y is equals to c to y is equals to d this is simply given by v is equals to integral c to d this axis ke about hai uska dy ho jayega baki pi x square ho gaya so this is the formula and volume of revolution is this formula for the about x axis so if i draw the diagram for this case we will obtain so this is the point y is equals to c this is the point y is equals to t and this has been given as x is equals to f of y so these formulas are also very very important so with this we come to the end of this chapter i don't think that there is anything left has, which has to be covered only thing is you have to practice the questions i have already explained you the concepts and now we shall be starting with the last section that is the vector algebra now we will start with the vector algebra or vector calculus okay so i will be discussing only the main points which are required for solving the questions and i will not be discussing anything extra or anything which is we have, which we have already studied in class 11th and 12th so the first topic that i will be discussing is the dot product before dot product i would like to tell you that in order to represent a vector we are simply representing by an arrow okay or this can also be like this or it is also written like this so all the three ways are used for the representation of these vectors so dot product is vector a dot vector b and this simply meaning mod of vector a mod of vector b into cosine of the angle between these two vector so dot means dot 
okay next we have the cross product cross product is vector a cross vector b this is nothing but magnitude of the vector a magnitude of the vector b sign of the angle between the two vectors and n cap where n cap is a unit vector perpendicular to the both a and b okay so this is about the dot and the cross products and we already know what are dot and cross products are okay now we will go for the gradient it is represented by this inverted triangle or inverted triangle this is called as nabla and this is nothing but del by del x of i cap plus del by del y of j cap plus del by del z of k cap so into the function okay we will multiply by the function jo bhi hame diya hua hai so i cap is the unit vector along the x axis y is the j is the unit vector along y axis and k is the unit vector along the z axis now if we are talking about gradient if we are talking about the scalar part now the scalar part is the gradient of phi it is represented as sorry sorry this is not gradient this is simply the nabla this is simply the nabla operator and scalar part is actually the gradient of phi this is equals to nabla of phi and this is the vector point function okay this is the vector point function and it is represented as phi of x y z okay now the next part that we have the vector part and the vector part is called as the divergence of f where divergence is nabla dot f and we have one more part that is curl of f this is equals to nabla cross f theek hai this is the scalar point function this is the vector point function so divergence is giving us the scalar point function and curl is giving us the vector point function okay so now if we have a curve like this then at this point this is the tangent and this is going to be the normal this is the curve this is the tangent and this is the normal which is drawn at this point such that the normal r bar is equals to xi plus yj plus zk this is actually the equation of the curve okay and if we write dr upon dt we will obtain dx upon dt i cap plus dy upon dt j cap plus dz upon dt k cap okay and if phi x y z has been given then this is the this is equals to c represent the equation of surface this is the equation of the surface okay so the normal is actually represented by nabla dot phi this is nothing but the normal okay and dr upon dt this is nothing but the tangent okay so this part is representing the normal and this is representing the tangent if we find out this part we will obtain i into del phi by del x plus j cap into del phi by del y plus k cap into del phi by del z this would be the normal part and the tangent part we have already written like this okay and we will and since this is equals to 0 just a second del phi by del x oh i have missed one step i'll write it down that if this is the equation of the surface then we have i'll write it here del phi upon del x dot del x upon del t plus del phi upon del y plus into del y upon del t plus del phi upon del z into del z upon del t this is equals to 0 
okay so this part is zero and hence the normal part multiplied by the tangential part this is also will be zero so the gradient of a scalar point function is actually represented by the grade of phi this is equals to nabla dot phi it is simply i cap del by del x plus j cap del by del y plus k cap del by del z of phi theek hai phi bahar multiply ho jayega and it will be like this so phi se agar hum multiply kar le since it is a scalar so it will be i cap del phi by del x plus j cap del phi by del y plus k cap del phi by del z and this is nothing but this is the vector point function this is actually representing the vector point function and the unit normal vector to the surface of phi is equals to phi of x y z if you are aiming to find out a unit normal vector a unit normal vector to this surface then that unit normal vector would be nabla dot phi upon mod of nabla dot phi or simply this is gradient of phi upon mod of gradient of phi okay now what is the meaning of the gradient of phi now this gradient of phi is actually representing the maximum rate of change of the field in the direction of x y and z and this gradient is perpendicular to the tangent at the point of plane it is perpendicular to the tangent and this gradient is normal surface to the tangent of a body this is also representing the normal surface to the tangent of a body so this is all about the gradient and if theta is the angle between the two surfaces theta is the angle between two surfaces say f x y z is equals to c and g x y z equals to c at a point p then we have cos theta is simply equals to nabla dot f at the point p nabla dot g at the point p divided by mod of nabla dot f at the point p and mod of nabla dot g at the point p so theta angle can be simply found out by using this relation and now we have two important cases that if r has been given as xi plus yj plus zk and r is actually nothing but under root of x square plus y square plus z square then first nabla of f of r is simply equals to f dash r upon r into r vector second nabla square f of r is simply equals to f double dash r plus 2 upon r into f dash r so these two are very very important points and i am expecting a question that gate 2018 may ask a question on this so please note down these formulas and practice the questions relating to this formula okay now we will study a topic on directional derivative okay so directional derivative of a surface say phi of x y z at a point p in the direction of a vector a okay so the directional derivative of this curve at a point p in the direction of a vector a is given by nabla dot phi at the point p dot vector a upon its 
magnitude. So this is a very very important formula. First we are going to find out the nabla dot phi simply means that the gradient of phi at p multiplied by a unit vector. A unit vector is nothing but the vector upon its magnitude and this is the component of the gradient at p in the direction of the vector a and the maximum value of the directional derivative to any surface at a point p is simply represented by mod of nabla of phi at p so this is the maximum value of the directional derivative at a point p okay max uh, directional derivative at the point p and for example if we have been given a vector f such that f i i cap sorry f1 i cap f2 j cap plus f3 k cap and we have to find out the divergence of f then it would be simply written as i into del by del x plus j cap into del by del y plus k cap into del by del z multiplied by f1 i cap plus f2 j cap plus f3 k cap now we will take a dot and after solving we will get del by del x of f1 plus del f2 by del y plus del f3 by del z so this is nothing but the scalar point function this is the scalar point function okay and the divergence of a magnet is positive at the north pole and the divergence of a magnet at the north south pole is negative why because north pole is actually acting as a source here so if nabla dot f is equals to zero then f is called as the solenoidal vector it is called as the solenoidal vector if nabla dot f is equals to zero this inverted triangle is called as nabla okay and if uh, one there is one more property that divergence of the curl of f is also equals to zero that means d c is equals to zero and c d is also equals to zero c d means curl of the divergence and divergence of the curl these are always zero and the curl of a vector at a point can be evaluated as the curl of f such that f has been given as f1 sorry f1 i cap plus f2 j cap plus f3 k cap f can be curl of f is simply written as i cap j cap k cap del by del x del by del y del by del z and here we will write only the coefficients of i cap j cap and z cap so here we will obtain f1 f2 and f3 and simply we will find out the determinant and this is actually representing the vector point function okay it is called as the vector point function and if nabla cross f is coming out to be zero then it is called as the irrotational vector it is called as the irrotational vector and i have already told you curl of the if you are taking curl of the gradient of phi then this is also coming out to be zero so cg is also zero curl of the gradient is also coming out to be zero now let us solve an important question and we have been given that r is equals to x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and given that f is a solenoidal vector f is a solenoidal vector and we have to find out the value of n such that vector f is equals to r to the power of n dot vector r so we will write it down r to the power 
एन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वेक्टर आर सिंपली मींस एक्स आई प्लस वाई जे प्लस जेड के नाउ इफ दिस वेक्टर इज सॉलिनॉइडल इट सिंपली मींस दैट नाबला डॉट एफ इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो बिकॉज दिस इज द कंडीशन फॉर सॉलिनॉइडल वेक्टर दिस इज द कंडीशन फॉर सॉलिनॉइडल वेक्टर सो वी विल टेक डेल बाय डेल एक्स ऑफ आर टू दी पावर एन एक्स प्लस डेल बाय डेल वाई ऑफ आर टू दी पावर एन वाई प्लस डेल बाय डेल जेड ऑफ आर टू दी पावर एन सेड दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो नाउ आफ्टर डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग वी विल ऑप्टेन आर टू दी पावर ऑफ एन प्लस एक्स एन आर एन माइनस वन प्लस इन सॉरी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय डेल आर बाय डेल एक्स प्लस आर टू दी पावर ऑफ एन प्लस वाई एन आर टू दी पावर ऑफ एन माइनस वन डॉट डी आर बाय डी वाई प्लस जेड एन आर टू दी पावर ऑफ एन माइनस वन प्लस सॉरी आर टू दी पावर ऑफ एन प्लस दिस डॉट डेल आर अपॉन डेल जेड दिस इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो Now r to the power of n, r to the power of n of r to the power of n becomes three r to the power of n plus n r n minus one, and we have x into del r by del x plus y into del r by del z del y plus z into del r by del z. This is equals to zero. So actually, this part is nothing but it is representing the vector r. It is representing simply R, so we will write it down that three r to the power of n plus n r n minus one dot r is equals to zero. So three plus n r to the power of n is equals to zero, and from here we will find n value is minus three. So this is an important question where we have to evaluate the value of n such that it is coming out to be minus three. Now let us solve another question. Where we have been given phi is equals to x upon x square plus y square, and we have to find out the nabla x that is i into del phi by del x plus y into sorry j cap into del phi by del y plus k cap into del phi by del z. So this is simply i into Del phi by del x is nothing but x square plus y square dot one minus x into two x d n dash minus n d dash upon d square. वो वाला formula लगा देंगे अपना plus j cap minus two y x upon x square plus y square whole square and uh, And we know that this is going to be zero because there is no component of z. So after solving it, we will obtain i cap y square minus x square upon x square plus y square whole square plus j cap minus two x pi upon x square plus y square upon two whole square. Okay, so nabla phi. At the point zero point, we have to find out what is the value of the gradient at the point zero point two. So this is simply coming out to be i by four. We will keep x is equals to zero and y is equals to two, so it is coming out to be i by four. So this was the question where we have to find out what would be the value of nabla dot phi at the point zero comma two. So the answer is coming out to be i by four. Now we will start with. Some important theorems. Some important theorems. So the first theorem that we have to study is the Green's and Stokes theorem. So Green's and the Stokes theorems are nothing but they are telling us about the work. done they are simply telling us about the work done and say vector r or the position vector has been given as xi plus yj 
such that dr has been given as dx i cap plus dy j cap and a force vector f has been given as f1 i cap plus f2 j cap then the work done is simply vector f dot vector r so this is f1 dx plus f2 dy so green's theorem and the stokes theorem are telling us about the work done okay and there is one special note point here that is scalar triple product the scalar triple product a dot b cross c this is equals to a cross b dot c and this is nothing but a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 and if the scalar triple product is equals to 0 then these vectors are linearly dependent and if it is not equals to 0 they are linearly independent okay so we can check whether the given vectors are linearly dependent or independent simply by calculating their scalar triple product now let us start with these theorems and we will study them in deep so first theorem is the greens theorem so if f1 x comma y and f2 of x comma y are the two differentiable functions of x and y and they are defined on a region r which is bounded by a simple closed curve c then that means this is the region r which is bounded by a closed curve c then the closed integral of f1 dx plus f2 dy this is equals to double integral of r del f2 upon del x minus del f1 upon del y dx dy and this is nothing but it is representing the work done so this is the greens theorem okay now we have the stokes theorem the stokes theorem states that if f is equals to f1 i cap plus f2 j cap plus f3 k cap is a differentiable function that is it is a vector point function defined on an open surface defined on an open surface s which is bounded by a simple closed curve c c is a closed curve then we have say this is the surface and it has been bounded by a simple closed curve c this is the surface s then we have integral of f dot dr is equals to integral over the surface s nabla cross f n cap d s so this stokes theorem is actually connecting the line and surface integral it is actually connecting the line and surface integrals so this is an important point to be noted here and it was asked in gate also that stokes theorem connects line and surface integral okay now the third theorem that we have is the gauss divergence gauss divergence theorem if we have vector f this is equals to f1 i cap f2 j cap f3 k cap it is a differentiable vector point function defined on a closed surface this has been defined on a closed surface s and in the stokes theorem we had the open surface so this is the difference between stokes and gauss theorem that is if we are having the open surface then we will apply the stokes theorem and for the closed surface we will apply gauss divergence theorem and enclosing a volume this 
closed surface is enclosing a volume V then then we have integral s f dot n cap ds this is equals to integral over the volume nabla dot f d v okay so this is actually the gauss divergence theorem so if we are having a closed surface such that this is enclosing a volume then we are going to use the gauss divergence theorem and the double integral is nothing but is also represented as single integral over the surface so these both are same now the point arises when to use which theorem so if in the question surface is closed surface is closed then we can use the gauss divergence theorem if the surface is open then we will use the stokes theorem and if in the question curved surface is given we have been given a curved surface so curved surface ke liye bhi hum log we can use the stokes theorem and stokes theorem is generally involving the three components of a vector we have to remember that which is involving three components of a vector okay now for the closed surfaces for the closed surface we use gauss divergence theorem closed surfaces for example we have a sphere we have a cube we also have a cuboid and we can also have a cylinder so these all are the closed surfaces and for the open surface we are using the stokes theorem okay and if we are having the simple closed curves if we are having the simple closed curves then if we are having only the two components of vector that is vector in two dimension then we will use the greens theorem greens theorem for example f1 and f2 are given and if we have been given vector in three dimension then we will use stokes theorem that is f1 f2 and f3 three components of vector will be given okay what will be the case when we have been given a straight line if we have been given a straight line then no theorem is applied then no theorem is applied and we will simply do the integration okay so for a straight line no theorem will be applied it is only applied for a curve for a surface whether it is closed or an open surface okay and now how to solve stokes how to solve questions using the stokes theorem okay how to solve the questions using the stokes theorem when the curve has been given a closed surface when we have been given a curve on a closed surface okay so f1 i cap f2 j cap f3 k cap okay this has been given so we will use integral s nabla cross f n cap ds okay and when the curve is an open surface or when the curve this is given like the curve is like this and if the curve is an open surface like this then we will use integral f dot dr when the curve is an open surface okay so with this we come to the end of this chapter and this was the last chapter in mathematics however we shall not be studying about 
the laplace transformations you can simply learn the formulas which have been given in this chapter in the chapter of laplace transformation and from the next lecture we shall be starting with the new subject that is the engineering mechanics and in the engineering mechanics we will be mainly focusing only on the previous year questions so with this we come to the end of the mathematics i once again request you that you have to go through the laplace transformation only the formula part and need not to solve very tough questions because this is that part is mainly for electrical engineering and electronics engineering so thank you so much